time you come to church, you know, I told you last week, um, it was on, yeah, it was on Wednesday Bible study. I said, you serve God with an open mind. Every time you go to his presence, be willing to embrace new instruction. Be willing to embrace his teachings. Let him teach you what you are yet to know about him. Don't serve God rigidly. You know who a rigid person is? He does not want to open up for something new. Such a person will say, this is what I already know. You can't change what I know. But you know, I was listening yesterday at home. Uh, a professor was being interviewed. A professor in the UI. Retired professor. An aged woman. She should be in her 80s. She now says something I will never forget. He said, one thing that we Africans don't know that we should know is that you improve in knowledge. Every knowledge that is given to you, don't just take it and stay at that point. He said, that's one problem we have in Africa. Our fathers give us knowledge of something and we just stay with it. He said, but the British, the Americans, the whites, he said, when they give them knowledge, they improve on it. Every knowledge you are giving, you need to improve on it. Am I communicating? That's why you see that technologically, they are just going ahead. Because we are not improving on the one we are giving. Somebody will say, ah, is the Jesus, the way they taught me Jesus two years ago, is the way I say of him. No, you need to improve. Hallelujah. God is a God of new things. So I'm speaking on a topic, never allow anyone kill this. Now, the this there is T-H-E-S-E, -E, not just singular this, T-H-I-S. No. Never allow anyone kill this. Now, which means I'll be speaking to, speaking to you on so many things. You know, I told you the month of January is the month of foundation. I'll be teaching you on things that you need to put in place this year. Never allow anyone to kill this. Now, and when I use the word anyone, I don't want you to see any human being as your enemy. The devil is our anchor enemy, but you must always remember that the devil uses human hands, human voices, the human body to carry out his works. The devil is a spirit. He does not have human hand. The devil is a spirit. He does not have human mouth. He's a spirit. But for him to operate, he uses physical beings. Hallelujah. Talk to me, hallelujah. So that's why you must, I must show you things in your life that you must not allow anyone to kill. May the Lord give us understanding. So I'll speak on one in this service. In the second service, I'll speak on the other one. What's the one we are looking at this morning? Do not allow anyone to kill love in you. Do not allow anyone to kill love in you. L-O-V-E. Now, I must tell you the truth. Then God, the Bible calls God love. In fact, I saw in my scriptures, I will show you that anyone that claims to be born again, but does not love, does not know God. Ah! So it means that the most important thing that every Christian should know how to practice, we should know how to what? Practice, demonstrate love. Let's go to the anchor scripture. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 9. 1 John chapter 4. Okay, we take verse 8 first. 1 John chapter 4 verse 8 to start up. Then as study goes on, we begin to tear it. Now let's read together after the count of three. Can we be on our feet? Let's honor the voice of God as we read this one. This is the first Bible reading for the service. After the count of three, let's read together. One two and let's go three he that loveth not knoweth not god for god is love please be seated look at this simple scripture he that loveth not knoweth not god for god is love can i tell you this truth now what is love now love simply means short meaning of definition of love to show care or can I say, to care in your heart. 
And you know, if you have something in your heart, it must be expressed. So in the shortest form, love is care. Now, it means that you are not just thinking without you caring. Anything you are thinking, anything you want to do, the, what you nurse in your heart, you look that crosses your heart, you care. Now, I love the message Bible. It says, the person who refuses to love doesn't know the first thing about God, Kai. Which means even the first thing about God is not holiness. The person who refuses to love doesn't know the first thing about God. Because God is love. So you can't know him if you don't love. And if I must tell you the truth, the number one thing that is missing in the Christianity we are practicing now is love. We know how to pray. Churches can pray. We know how to speak in tongues. Churches speak in tongues. We know how to uh, print posters. We know how to do programs. We know how to paste billboards. But can I tell you that one thing that is lacking in the Christianity of now is that Christianity of today, we just do things without caring about the feeling of anybody. We just do things once we feel that, well, as long as it's convenient for me, as long as it pleases me, I don't want to know if anybody is hurt. Now, and that is, listen, I must tell you the truth. One of the reasons why Christianity is only growing in number in Africa and not really reaching people is because the people coming to church are not practicing love. All we know is, if I want to test you now, let me throw one prayer point. Let us pray for Nigeria. You will see the dimension of our voice. If I now withdraw it and say, okay, let us pray for ourselves. You will see the dimension that our voice will what? go higher. If I say, let us pray for the body of Christ, it will go low. Why is it so? Yes, we know it is one of the signs of the end time. You know, when Paul was writing uh, to, uh, a letter to Timothy, he said, at the end time, there shall be perilous times. That people shall no longer be lovers. People shall become selfish. But look at this. Let's not forget this. The real thing that Christianity stands on is love. If there is no love, God will not send the Son. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Take that phone from him, please. He gave his only begotten Son that who? Ah, why am, why am I saying the wrong thing? Take that phone from him. Let me think. Uh -huh. Let him concentrate. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have whatever. Be because he so much care, the son is his own son. Now, he was willing to sacrifice his son so that people will be saved. Now, what is love? Love is to care. Love is not selfish. Love is not you just thinking about yourself. Love is whatever you want to do, you consider two things. I'll tell you as we go on. So Christianity is sitting on love. And what is lacking today is lack of love. If we look at it, we dissect it, look around. You will see that most people don't care again. That's why we force people to come for, for, for workers' meeting. If you don't put penalty, that if you don't come for workers' meeting, we will suspend the choir. That's when people will come on time. If you don't come for choir, for, for, uh, for uh, HOD, uh, I don't know, technical department and things like that. Now, it is because there's no longer love. Now, that's why you also see that even the person, the, the, the gifted in church will be telling you, well, you are inviting me to come and do this in church. How much do you want to give me? It's no longer because of the love of God. People are now doing things because of themselves. Let us wake up. Do not allow anyone kill love because our anchor scripture shows us that if you don't practice love, you don't know God. And please, if you don't know God, will you make heaven? Answer me now. You can't make heaven now if you don't know God. Because I kept wondering that with the way churches are having large numbers, it is written in the scripture that only few people will make heaven. What will disqualify them? A lot of people will be disqualified on the platform of love. Now let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Hallelujah, somebody. True believers do not hate. True believers do not hate. True believers should not hate. Because the opposite of love is what? Hate. 
Now, what is love to care? What is hate to decide not to be nice? We can't practice it because of what our encounter uh, requires. What is love? I wrote here. It is care. You don't live uh, the, the, the I don't care life if you say you love. Hallelujah. Now, let's now go deeper. Who should we show love to? Now, I'll be using this to explain love better. Who should we show love to? Listen. Everything about Christianity is sitting upon two kinds of love. Number one, the Bible says we should love God with all that we have. He said, love the Lord your God with all. So, the first being that we are to demonstrate love to is God. Now, why did I become born again? I became born again because somebody told me that God so loved me and he gave his son to die for me. And when he told me that truth, I started thinking, how can somebody love me this much? And he gave his only son to die for me and I will not love him back. Ah, no, no. And I started crying. And when I, right there I was crying, the pastor asked me, do you not want to give your life to him? I said, yes. He gave his own son for me, to, to die for me. Why should I be doing the things to hurt him? And because of that, is I gave my life to Christ. Now, after giving my life to Christ, I remember I was going home that morning. You know, it was an afternoon. That afternoon, as I was going home, I was thinking of all the things that I used to do that is bad. And instantly I was saying, Lord, I'm sorry. Because I love you, I won't do this again. I promise you, I won't do this again. I was, nobody told me I was just because of love. Love is a powerful force. I said, Lord, I promise you, I promise you, you know what, Lord, I'm going to stop all the things. I'm, I will stop lying. I won't lie to my parents again. Lord, I promise you, I promise you, I won't work with bad people again. I promise you, I won't take alcohol again. I was just promising God. And when I got home, there's this uh, worldly music I used to listen to in those days. As a young, uh, young fellow, you know, I was uh, fifth, about 15 years old when I gave my life to Christ. You know, and I, it was a compilation of uh, love songs. I put it in cassette. I call it C90. They used to call it 90 minutes cassette those days. I couldn't sleep without those songs. So I would just play the cassette when I want to go to bed. And I will be listening to love song. And I, just, and I said, Lord, Lord, I know that as a child of God, I shouldn't be listening to this. I would rather replace it with worship. I took the sick. Nobody preached to me. You know, that's why I say, if you truly encounter love, you will change. Now, listen, that's to God. I was also now taught that if you say you love God, the Bible also says you should love your neighbor the same way you love yourself. So, if somebody asks you as a child of God, who should you love? You should love both God and your neighbor. And how should you love them? Love God with all. Love your neighbor as yourself. So which means, whatever you can't do to yourself, don't do it to your neighbor. If you say you know God. Whatever you cannot give to your, 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 your neighbor, don't give to yourself. Now let's confirm more of that. Let's go to scriptures. That's in John chapter 4. Now we are reading from verse 9. We'll stop at verse 21. From verse 9. From verse 9. Let's explain more of love. Shagadabasede. Shagadabas, Lengadabas in it. Now let's go on. I read. Then see it. No, no. First John chapter 4, verse 9. Not John 1. First John 4. We have read verse 8. This one is John. First John 4. Yes, I'm waiting for you. Or oh, you don't know first John 4. Maybe the person there is new. Now, look at this. It says, in this was manifested. Look at the love of God towards us. Because that God sent his only begotten son. Just look like what I explained. That we might live through him. He sent his only begotten. Verse 10. That we might live through him. This was the love of God demonstrated to us that made me. I'm telling you, since that time, I gave up alcohol. I gave up bad friends. I gave up lying. 
Because how will somebody love me and sacrifice his son? And me, I will not be able to sacrifice anything that he doesn't like. I read on. Hearing is love. Not that we loved God at first, but that he loved us and sent his son <clears throat> to be the propitiation of, sorry, for our sins. That, okay, go and pay the price. Instead of them to be punished, go and die. Let's move on. Let's move on. The next verse of our sins. Beloved, if God so loves us, can you see? We ought also to do what? Love one another. If God so much loves us. You know why I had to pick up this side of the scripture? I see that so many Christians claim to love God, but we are hurting ourselves. How can you say you love God and you are hurting? No, it's, leave that scripture. Leave that. I don't need my face now. He said, beloved, if God so loves us, we ought also to love one another. How can we say, okay, we love God. I'm born again. I'm going to church. But we can't love ourselves. If you ask us what is our problem in Africa now, number one is denomination. Two Christians from different churches cannot be, cannot, be, cannot be friends. You can't invite your fellow Christian to worship in your church, even if there's program. We're planning, we're planning, we know we, we do this family uh, uh, program every time, every year. We call it couples dinner. And I said, look for couples that are, that their marriage are above 20 years. Let's give them a word. So that they can be example, stand as example to younger people that marriage work. So somebody went to get a couple. They've been married for 23 years. But they, are, they attend Deeper Life Bible Church. So when they told them about the program, you know the first question they asked? They said, where do you want to do the program? They said, well, it's in our church. It's not the best. Uh, people say it's not in, on Sunday morning. I'm saying it so that the authorities can also hear. It's not on Sunday morning. It's in the evening. You don't have program. It's a dinner. We just want you to sit in front. You and your husband. So that we can give you gift. So that younger people will see that this is 20 years marriage. If it can work for them, it can work for you. Because people are gradually believing that marriage doesn't work anymore. You know what they said? They said, if you are going to do it in your church, we are not coming there. We are deeper lifers. We don't go to any other church. So if you are not going to go and rent a hall, where you do the program, we are not coming. They turned us down just like that. Show me that scripture. But if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Maybe you don't know. There's no church name in heaven. You never know. What we have in heaven is believers. So we ought to love ourselves. What is missing today is love. In fact, if can I tell you the truth? One of the things why so many people, Christians cannot win souls is lack of love. If you go to so many of you's house, so many of you Christians, when they say we are doing meeting, association, uh, landlord association meeting, or tenant association meeting, community meeting, some of you don't attend. You say, why well, we like that meeting, community meeting? They are talking about security, you don't want to be part. They are talking about how to clean the environment, you don't want to be part. And on Sunday, you carry your Bible. You'll be speaking in tongue. Yeah, God, 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 you are going. Now, when they open the list of the names of those owing in the community, money of security, vigilante money, you are number one and you are speaking in tongues. If you love, you will care. Now, how will you now preach to such people to follow you? To the glory of God, I'm not saying I'm perfect. This is my wife. And my husband. When she brought me into their family, she introduced me as a pastor. Now, pastor is an assignment. It's a calling. It does not take me to heaven. Am, am I communicating? What takes us to heaven is not your title or your assignment. What takes you to heaven is who you are in Christ. Am I communicating? When I came into their family, I related as a Christian, not as a pastor. Today, to the glory of God, when we have program, you will see all their family members. 
they are, they are happy to associate with us. Why? Because I live as a Christian. What does it take to live as a Christian? Love. What you cannot do to yourself, don't do to others. Now, let's re- see this one. Let's one. Beloved, if God, so, okay, we have seen this. Show us the next verse. Show us the next verse. We have a long reading. No man hath seen God at any time. Or have you? Even me, say, I never seen him. Do we have anybody here who have seen God? Answer me now. Have you the confirmed me, the prophet? Have you seen God? You have seen him? Where? It's not God you saw. One hour, one hour, one hour. Alone. <laughs> the Bible cannot lie. The Bible says no man had seen God at any time. For if we love one another, God dwells in us. How do we know that we've seen God? By our love life. God dwells in us. And his love is perfect in us. Can you see? No man has seen God. But how will you know that you have God? How will people know that you have God? It is your love life. No man has seen. Where am I? 13. Hereby, know we that we dwell in him. How do we know that we dwell in him? And he in us. Because he had given us of his spirit. Let's read on. (laughs) And we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world. Let's move on. We'll stop at verse 21. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwells in him and he is and, and he in God. Move on, move on, move on. And we, we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love. Can you see he's repeating it again? God is love. And he that dwell in love dwells where? Dwells in God. And God in him. Wait for me. Let me explain this one a little bit again. We are still talking about demonstration of love. You know that we are to the point that some of us don't care, to the point that listen, you are enjoying your gen. And you put your gen in the place where your neighbor cannot sleep. You are the one enjoying it. You don't even want to care whether that gen you put on is harming somebody somewhere. Some of you they have even told you, hey, she get joy about a big generator and a crew and take B sister, take B C B T and another place. Some don't care. I don't care. Look at this. And we have, we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God. And God in him. Let me share this with you. Where we lived before we moved to our own house. Our neighbors, though they didn't know that where they put their gen, the the, the, is it smoke we call it? Yes. Was coming directly into our room. And they won't up their gen until to 12. So you know what we do most times? We we'll go and sit in the sitting room and we we'll stay there till 12. Once we hear that they've up their gen, we quickly go and open the windows for the smoke to go out. We wait till like 12.30 before we go to bed. And we lived in that house for about four years. So towards the tail of end of, the, of uh, moving to our own house, something happened. I used to park, there's where I used to park my car. So I just noticed that as I wanted to, uh, as I came out, the wife of the man quickly parked his own car, uh, their own car. And when I was about going, he said, Please don't park here again. I've been parking here. You told me not to park here. I should park here. I parked there. You told me now you are telling me to, you know. And I said, I don't understand. I said, you just so I did during the evening time. I now went to see when the husband was around. I don't understand. You have changed my parking space severally. What happened? He said, We don't know. She said, I don't know. It's like something smelling from your car and it's entering our flat. I said, is that what you want? Okay. 
But should I tell you this? And now I explain that. For four years, we could not sleep in our room until around to one because of this. They said, wow, we didn't know. I said, because I, I saw that there's no other place you can put your gen. Now, is it just these few days? Ah, the, the person felt bad. Ah, the man looked at his wife and I told you. I told you not to do what you, you've done. I said, well, I just said, I should let you know that we are packing tomorrow. We are going to our own house. If there's anything a Christian should practice to I and mean, pray to really grow in, grow in love. If you practice love, even unbelievers will love you. If you practice love, I'm telling you, even unbelievers will love you. Love is to care. You want to take an action, you find out how will this person feel if they hear this. No, no, no. Ask my wife. We used to do it. So many things say, no, no, no. Let me go and find out. Let me go and. Let's move on. 17. We'll stop at 21. I have a lot to teach you. I just want to expand this scripture. Hearing is our love made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Hmm. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Move on. Hmm. Whoever is there, please be fast. We have a lot to learn. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Wait for me. Our marriage will be going towards 21 years. What kept us together is love. Sir, I cannot buy wristwatch for myself if I don't buy for my wife. Do you know why? Because she's my better half. Why will I think of myself and neglect her? Now, the same thing. She will go to the market. She wants to go and get a dress for herself. She'll be coming with a dress for me. Ah, honey, honey, she calls me honey. Honey, I went to the market to buy uh, this shoe. And I see that I bought. She said, you only sent me that one of her own shoe can buy three of my own. You know, women things are more expensive than that of men. It has kept us together. Do you know that the same thing we have demonstrated, um, I mean, we have taught our children. How will you meet food at home? We have three children. Maybe the firstborn now comes in now. Ah, I'm hungry. You now get home. You now meet food. You now eat and not talk about your younger ones. We, don't, we have not trained them that way. Love has kept us for 21 years. Ask all the people working with us. We have about... Um, about 14 or 15 people that we pay salaries to every month. Our staff. I remember there was one day I was seriously sick. On the sick bed. And I called our accountant. Dickie, please come over to the house. I was shivering under the blanket. And I was signing their, their salary. It touched him. I didn't know it would touch him. He went to touch somebody. Say, ah, Papa, then cool up. Do you know why I do that? Because if I'm sick, it's not their business that I'm sick. My contract with them is that at the end of every month, we pay salaries every third of new month. At the third of the new month, collect your salary. And why did we shift it to the third? Ask my wife. We noticed that there are some people, once they collect salary, they won't tell you they won't come back the next month. Love is what is lacking in our society today. If we demonstrate love, I'm telling you, there won't be a problem. There is none of our staff that want to leave. The teachers at the school at the level, the teachers at... We never sat down to say, okay, maybe any of our staff will now call us, increase our salary. No, we are the ones, they just tell them, when we want to increase our salary, check the envelope very well and see if what you have there is what is... We agreed with you. Once they check, ah, ah, you know, Papa, Mama, it's not what our agreement. We just notice that the way the country is now, what we agreed cannot pay you. 
And my mentor will always say, if you have it in your heart, God will put it in your hands. All the houses we have lived as tenants, go and ask all our landlord. We don't wait for them to write us letters because we believe that some of them, it is their rent they used to take care of their own need. And one day I was praying for rent about 20 years ago. God said, son, you don't pray for rent. You plan for rent. That was the last time I prayed for rent. So I started planning it so that no landlord will say, Pastor Prince Willis owe me. That's why when we want to pack, ask my wife, ask my children. Landlords used to beg us, a jaw, a man law, a man law, a jaw. I'm asking you again, what is missing in the world of today? Love. It is because I love the kind of woman my in-laws gave me. Every festive season, I will send gifts to, my, to, their, to, to all our brothers. This festive, this Christmas I just left, I sent one, one chicken to all her elder brothers. Why? Because I want to appreciate the kind of woman they gave me. Her mother and dad are dead. When they were alive, I used to do the same. Love is the gateway. If you are speaking in tongues and you don't practice love, according to, I think that should be 1 Corinthians uh, chapter, uh, is it chapter 12 verse 1? Can we see 12 1 or 14 1? We are coming back to John. No? Ah, Holy Spirit. The dimension you are going today. What I've written that we have not gone there. Quickly show me. First Corinthians, either 12, 1 or 14, 1. Even if I speak in tongues of angels and I lack love. 13. First Corinthians 13. Are you sure it's 13? Yes. Thank you. Look at this. He said, do I speak with the tongues of men? That's you are eloquent in speaking English. And of angels. What is the tongue of angels? Ragadabo sataya. And have not love. Charity means love. I become as what? Sounding brass. And a tinkling cymbal. Show me from the message Bible. Thank you. If I speak with human eloquence. And an angelic ecstasy. But don't love. Who am I? I am nothing but a creaking of a rusty gate. Can you see? When my dad was alive, listen, look out. He was a Muslim. But at the dying minute, I preached to him. Why did I preach to him? Why did he accept Christ? I will tell you. Every of their, their festive season, I go there. He kills two rams. He kills one for his late mom. He'll kill one for himself. And, and I'll ask my dad, Daddy, why are you always doing this? He said, this is the only festive season all my children will gather. I want to see everybody gather. I gather with my dad. We rejoice together. I eat with him. So at the death point, when he was about to die, if I have allowed Christianity, uh, I mean, wrong doctrine to enter my head, he will tell us, how will you go to a Muslim festival to greet your dad? He's my dad. I didn't choose, choose him. God gave him to me. That was the same thing I told one of her sisters. When she wanted to get married, did daddy say, as long as I'm alive, they will do Islamic wedding for you. But our daughter, my sister, my daughter came and said, daddy, papa, we are not going to die. I say, the wedding doesn't belong to you. It is your father's right. Let him do it. It's the final honor he should do for you. Once you do his own, your husband takes you. You now become your husband. Thank God she hearkened. Do you know that because I've, I've created that love relationship with my dad on his dying bed, I now came and said, Daddy, Jesus, I've been talking to you about how far. He said, Pastor, I'm ready now. And I prayed with him. After some hours, he smiled and died. Chori bukwa gidi to nlu yen ko convert anybody. Am 
am I communicating? Show me verse 2 before we go back to finish that scripture. Thank you. If I speak God's word with power, hmm, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps. But what? But I don't love. Who am I? Which means that love is more important than faith. Love is more important than prophecy. Love is more important than speaking in tongues. Are you sure so you hear which are they talk? What is the most important? Love. If there's anything you should work on improving on, go and improve your love life. That's what I told uh, one of uh, our people. I, I told one of our young pastors. I said, see, what you have seen in my marriage, you are not practicing. If you are practicing it, you will not have a problem. Can I call myself idiot? No now. Will I now call my wife idiot? Christianity is sitting on what? One thing. And what is that? L-O-V-E. That's why before you step on people, put yourself in their shoes. If you are the one, how will you feel? That's what love is. Yeah, let's go back to that first John. I have some things to show you here. First John chapter 4. Thank you. We are in 19. We stop at 21. We love him because he first loved us. Verse 20. If a man say, I love God, hmm, and does what? And hated his brother. Who is he? He's a liar, even if he's speaking in tongues. He hates his brother. Which means you cannot be born again and, and practice hatred. If you say you are born again and you hate, you are a liar. I don't like what you did to me. Let it be like that. I don't like it. Yes, you can change your principles. But don't hate anybody. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? The last one for this morning, before we take the teachings. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, love his brother also. Now, what is now the question I want to answer that I want us to treat? I have four more things to teach you before close. What are the strategies of the devil to kill love in you? What are the strategies of the devil to kill love in you? This thing I'm teaching you and the one I'm going to teach you in the second service, it was in my dream on Friday night that somebody was just teaching me. You're just telling me my ears. And I woke up, he said, go and teach the church. What, what was the question again? What are the strategies of the devil to kill love in you? Number one, he can steer all people to hurt you. Sorry, he can steer all people to hurt your innocent heart. He can steer up people to hurt your innocent heart. This is the plan of the devil. When people hurt you, the devil wants you to begin to reduce in love. You know, the first strategy of the devil to kill your love life is to make people. He'll be stirring up people to hurt you. Your innocent heart. People stab you. If I, if I tell you, I'll ask my wife now. People have stabbed us. People that we raised from, 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 from zero.
Once they get to a point in life, they forget all the things you have done in the past. What have they done to you? If time permits, I'm looking at the time. I can tell you a few. People were, that were nothing, nothing. When I say nothing, nothing, nothing. People that will be giving more food, put money, uh, food money in their hand. People that will give our clothes to. At times, some of our members are saying, okay, my wife, go and, go and, they just delivered. Be going, go and take baits for, go and bait them. Bait their baby. But you'll be shocked. That you, you hear somebody say, and somebody said this about, I, I had this, and because of this I had. We now be saying, wait, have we forgotten all those sacrifices? But you know what God told me? He said, son, when these things happen, they happen because the devil wants to hurt your innocent heart. So that you can stop loving. Let me tell your neighbor, love again. I didn't hear you. As long as the heart endures, people will hurt you. People will hurt you. But it does not mean you should stop loving. Because I've just shown you that everything that should show that you love God is love. That you have God, sorry, is love. People will hurt you. Listen at this point. What the devil wants is to make you decide to turn away from helping or being nice to people. That's what the devil wants to achieve. Mio, I will not love anybody again. Mio, I will not be nice to anybody again. Mio, ah, because umami, umami, ah. You know, some we even say, if you see umami and see snake, I better kill the umami before you kill snake. All those principles are demonically originated. To do one thing. What is that? To kill love. But let us apply the principle, of, the principle of our Lord Jesus. What's Jesus' principle? Matthew 23. 33 to 34. Let's look at the principle of our Lord Jesus. What is Jesus' principle? Matthew 23. Matthew 23. 33 and 34. The Bible says, Ye serpents, you generation, Matthew 23, 33 and okay. Can you escape the... Let, let, let me see uh, 34. 34. 34. I think I mean... Please check it for me. Maybe you should be, uh, check 24. Now, it was where Jesus was being crucified on the cross. Check 22, sorry. And they were, they were nailing him. I know what he looked up. He looked up, he looked at the people and he said... Father, please forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. Father, please forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. That is the principle you should apply with life. Most of these people that are hurting you is the devil using them. They don't know what they are doing. And it is the devil that is looking for one thing. He wants you not to practice the main thing that will make you like to be like God. And what's that? Love. Has my children not hurt me? They have hurt me. It won't stop me from being their father now. Have somebody say, start loving again. Because some of you are making up your mind. You are bringing up some certain principles. Meaning, Lord, me, me, church, meaning, meaning, that's any come on. Mama, that's any church. Ah, and you need to Don't do that. I've said more than that one, too. You have a message for me? Number two, second strategy of the devil. So what's number one again? He can steer up people to hurt your innocent heart. 
So when people are hurting your innocent heart, know that the devil has a plan. The devil has a plan. The devil wants to kill love in you. Number two. He can make people misinterpret your expression of love. He can make people misinterpret your expression of love. I think this one happened to one of our sons in the house. He shared it with me. He said he felt so bad. He told me how he said there's somebody in their area, in his uh, a neighbor. He went to give them gifts. It was during festive season. And the person said, ah, sorry, they warned us in our church that somebody is going to use gift against us that we should not collect any gift for now. <laughs> it's, it's an, yes. So he felt bad. Uh -uh. Mr. Aniola, you that? Carry on. He felt bad. The, ah. How come? Why? Hey. When he told me I laughed, I said, come and ask me. One day, one of our uh, people came to church and the wife didn't come. And I said, ah, sir, what happened to your wife? He said, she's she, she seriously sick. She didn't come to church. Ah, you know, as a pastor, what should you do now? Is it not to visit? So after the service, I rushed straight to their house. They live in a duplex. I sat at the sitting room. And I said, please, where is she? Let me pray for her. They went, the husband went upstairs. I do just notice that the husband stay and stay and stay and stay and stay. So when he was coming down, he was coming down reluctantly. I said, where is she? Can we? I wanted to follow him up. Eh, hey, sir, maybe you should just pray downstairs here. He didn't say more than that. So I just stood, I stood downstairs there and prayed for the person I didn't see. So when I was coming back, the devil was asking me several questions. Is that how, how less busy you are? When people misinterpret your expression of love, please don't be offended. Did you hear me? Please don't be offended. The devil wants to kill love in you. That's the target. Have you bought a gift for somebody before and somebody will be asking you, is this, is this the best way you can appreciate me? That the person didn't know that you, you went out of your will. Okay. Oh God. That's why I say, can I talk to every one of you here today? No matter how, we, uh, uh, how people express love, even if you don't need that thing, I knew of people that came to give me gifts during Christmas. One of our dickness brought a very ch good chicken for me. I had 100 chicken in my house. I had 100 broilers. She brought one. She didn't know that I have 100. Ha! Ha! And you know where I learned that? I learned it from the late, the, this man of God of blessed memory, from a winner's chapel. Uh, um, uh, Bishop uh, Afolabi. It was Reverend Chooks that told me. He said they took three, uh, three, uh, two bars of yam to his house for Christmas. A keg of brown toy. He said, Bishop, say, eh, me, a whole me. This yam, 
Ah, we eat pounded yam today. Ah, we eat pounded. Ah, ah, Reverend, thank you. Now me, you bring all this one from. Please put it in the store. He said when he got to the store, he saw yam from floor reach the roof. He said he was now wondering, how, why did Bishop Michael Falabi now thank me this way? He didn't want him to feel bad. When people show, express love, when they try to express, don't kill their heart. Don't commonize what, whatever they are doing. If you do that, you know what you are doing? You are killing love. And if you are not careful, I must say it, it's the devil that is using him at that moment. See, I hear. Listen. He can make people, like I said, misinterpret your expression of love. Some people will say you are jobless. They are misinterpreting you. Some will say you are trying to show up. Who first show up, Ninja? Show up last one. This is you that you came into the church. You just saw that ah, there's no drummer on the drum uh, set and I can play drums. And you went there, you took the stick during praise and you started playing. And some people be looking at you. You are Yeoshi. You are Yeoshi. You are going to You know what they want to kill? The devil wants to use it to kill love in you. Or you walked into the church. You see that the chairs are dusty. You pick the duster. You start, mop, you know, cleaning it. Uh, mm. And you know the problem of every church? They are old members. They are the ones, the old wine. They don't like new wine to stay inside their, their bottle. They want to own the church. So when they see new people coming in, they want to react. I always encourage our new people when they come to see me like this. You know, I was discussing with one of our young brothers uh, during the week, and he touched me. I didn't know that God would even leave me this way. He said he was busy playing drums somewhere on that crossover night. And around 10, something said to him, stand up from where you are. Go to God's power now. They need somebody to play. Let's finish this one. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Listen, some people, you, uh, 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 like I said, you say you are just showing up. Some will call you eye service. Listen, I wrote here, always understand that the devil has a target. He wants to stop you from loving. If you stop loving, the devil wins. Understand this. If you stop loving, the devil has won. I wrote here. I wrote it because I wanted to bring out an experience. Have you heard of some terrible gossip about yourself before? That really shows that really shows that that really shows that you were misunderstood. Have you really heard? Me, I've heard. That will finish preaching powerful message. Somebody will now go and begin to spread. He preached that message because of what he had. He said, lie, it's not God. He got to a point in our ministry when our ministry was young. I was always afraid to come and preach. Because somebody will misunderstand me. But I had to get to a point that I didn't care anymore. Yeah, let's take number three quickly. We are answering a question. What are the strategies of the devil to kill love in you? Number three. He will send people that will make you feel that God's preparation process is a sign that God doesn't answer prayer. 
How will he send these people? People will say, upon all your love, 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 love. What has happened to you? Look back onto show phone and wonder. Now, let me say, because of those who are writing, he will send people that will make you feel that God's preparation process is a sign that God doesn't answer prayer or value the love you are practicing. Now, what does that mean? Listen, no matter how good you are in the kingdom, there is a waiting time for harvest. So, in your time of waiting, some people will be coming around. Oh, upon all your love, I want to let train. I want to nice, you see. All the people say you are nice, you are nice, you are loving, you are this. Where are they? They have just come, collect, and left you. You are just deceiving yourself. You will die like this. But can I tell you this truth? With God, there is a process, a time of waiting. It's not that God has forgotten. God doesn't forget people. Psalm 40 from verse 1 shows me. David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. No matter how you practice love, you must learn to wait for a season of harvest. You know what God does with your season of process? is to prepare you for the coming harvest. Your process is to prepare you for the coming harvest. It's not that God forgot you. There are so many people that have helped that God has used me to raise. They are in a, some of them are abroad in different places. When it is time, it does not cost God anything to touch their heart if they are the ones God will use for me. Psalm 40. Let me show you that there is a waiting season. You can't do anything about the waiting season. It will definitely come. I have five minutes more. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord. Now, at this waiting season, the devil will show you, he will show you people that, have, people that don't care that have gone ahead of you. Don't bother about those that have gone ahead. Can you see that David also waited? David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. The Lord will hear your cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon the rock and established my goings. If you wait, this will be your testimony. If you refuse to give up, this will be your testimony. At least this week alone, this, okay, last week, this is a new week. I met three people that God have used me to train. That kept telling me that, Papa, the church where we are worshipping now, I used to tell them that everything you are enjoying in my life, one man trained me. So I may be my waiting season now. Let's take number four. There's no time. The last one. What's the question again? What are the strategies of the devil to kill love in you? He will use evil-minded slash that stroke immature ministers to spread teachings that gradually kills the flow of love. He will use evil-minded slash immature ministers to spread teachings that gradually kill the flow of love. Can I tell you this too? There are immature ministers in the body of Christ now. They can start the service by saying, Womi, Womi, and to a leg bear or tie any. Wrong teaching. Or koto just te josun te joji or tie any. I call such pastors pastors that gives us autacious mentality. Then, go cut out a man's spread, autacious mentality. So, see our back bone jelly, I do a mountain of fire. Ulua, or a jack, we don't let me jay. They didn't just start. Acts of Apostles chapter 15, 1 and 2. Quickly show us. That's the last scripture for this morning. In the days of Paul the Apostles, they were there too. And certain men which came down from Judea, Judah, taught the brethren and said, 
except he be circumcised. After the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Can you see they came with the wrong doctrine? Look at what Paul said in verse 2. One more thing, Basheta and Shige. When we when, went there for Paul and Barnabas, had no small distinctions and disputation with them. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others, sorry, where, where, where am I? They, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem. Let's go and see the elders and confirm what we are teaching is right. Now, that's the problem we have today. Deeper life cannot sit with new covenant. New covenant cannot sit with redeemed. Four square cannot stay with God's power. CAC cannot stay with mountain of fire. Why? Because some wrong ministers at the top cost a buck. See, we serve a multi-faced God. Somebody said he got to heaven. People that we are, all the people that use earring, we go to air fire. I showed him from the Bible. The angel that came from heaven to deliver message to, to Daniel. The Bible says there was a gold belt around his waist. Show Lopatini. If the angel that came from heaven put on gold belt, which means in that heaven, they are fashion minded. I say, see, all these things are personal encounter. A person can have an encounter not to use those things. It does not mean we should generalize it. Am I communicating? Now, if I now see someone that is not using it, I say, ah, I see you No, 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 no. A person from personal encounter, there are certain things that me, I can't tell you, me, I can never do. But it is not written in the Bible anywhere that is a sin. They cause havoc. Now, and most of these pastors that are causing havoc now, they are coming as in form of prophets and prayer leaders. Ah. A woman came to see one of her sisters. They, they pushed her, pushed her. She left her husband's house. See. I asked her, has your husband ever beat you before? He said, no. They've been married. They, have, uh, they, they are blessed with two children. Has he ever beat you before? He said, no. Uh, why did you leave him? He said, uh, it all started. There's one prayer meeting at Osusami. As I entered there, ah, the pastor just looked at me and said, Ah, he 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 looked at me and said, Otacious mentality. Are there enemies? There are enemies truly. But we can't hate them. The Bible says we should even love our enemies. I want to close. Have you learned something this morning? That was the same thing I told somebody. They told him. The prophets told him. Your mother is a witch. And I told him, ah, they want to destroy you. Even if your mother is a witch, the Bible says, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long. No pastor can give you long life. It is your parents that should give it to you. I said that your, the Bible says, it's a, it's, it's, it's a law that carries a promise. That your days may be long and I may be well with you. Now, and I now show the sister, I say, see, the Bible says, honor your father and mother. The Bible did not say, honor your father and mother that is a witch or that is a pastor. Whether it's a witch or wizard, whether they are pastors or imams, the Bible says, honor them so that your days may be long and that it may be well with you. I say now, let's reverse it. Dishonor your father and mother, your days will not be long and it will not be well with you. 
She looked at me and said, that's a simple thing. And now that they say she's a witch, do what you need to do for her that the Bible says you do. Honor her with what you have. Honor her with the grace that you are given. Let God be the one to judge. Will you love again? Be on your feet if you are blessed. I'm asking, will you love again? You are not talking this morning. Or are you angry? Are you part of the audacious mentality people? Now I want to ask, or eyes closed, or hair bow. If you are here, you are not yet born again. You have not given your life to Jesus. And you want to become born again this morning. Just lift your right hand. Only your right hand I want you to lift. And I will lead you to the Lord Jesus. You want to give your life to Christ. You want to give your life to Christ. Is there anybody like that in the church? If you are lifting your hands, just say after me, Lord Jesus, I accept you today as my Lord and personal Savior. Please forgive my sins. Cleanse my name from the book of death. Write it in the book of life. Today, I am born again. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. And amen. How many of you are coming for the first time? Today is your first time of watching me.